This is Circe Olson Wessner. I'm the director of the Museum of the American Military Family in Tejeras, New Mexico, and this is our podcast, Shout. It's June, which means that it's Pride Month, and I'm speaking with Laura Belden, our 2016-2019 artist-in-residence, about our newest project, Shout, the play. She's in Richmond and I'm in New Mexico, so we're going to talk over the phone. And although we've been working on projects for years, we've actually never met in person. Hi, Laura. Hi, Cersei. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it seems like we've known each other forever, but I'm not even sure how we met. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think initially we we met online over um, over major discussion across Facebook about um, uh, military brats. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, but since then, we've collaborated on several projects together, including our anthology, also named Shout, and, and the play. Um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about the anthology that started this whole thing. It was, uh, it came out a couple years ago. What was it like? Because you were the artist in residence, yet you were working on this book. Um, what was it like working on it, and what was your process, and how did you compile stories for Shout, the book. Um, so that was our first project, I mm. believe, together. Mm. And um, I remember being very, very excited about it uh, because it was something that we could do in different states and um, and include, you know, the, the, the world, basically. Mm. Um, and um, so so when, when we originally thought about doing it, we thought we would put um, calls for entries out. Mm. And we did, but um, we didn't get that much of a response back. Um, and the thing that, you know, the way the world is today, everybody was just really busy, and the thought of writing down their stories was a bit daunting in uh -huh. their busy lives. So it ended up being I just changed the format and um, reaching out to um, LGBTQ plus uh, and allies um, to tell stories of their military life experience uh, just became, hey, let's make an appointment and talk over the phone and I'll tape it and uh, we'll pull a story out of our casual conversation, really. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what, so what the format that worked best was you know, I would just start talking to people and we would share our stories and within just having a casual conversation, these really wonderful stories started coming out. And so uh, then, um, you know, we would uh, end up um, transcribing those stories mm -hmm. um, uh, to print and uh, eventually had an editor take a look at it um, on your end, on the museum's end, mm -hmm. and um, they fine-tuned the stories, and, you know, voila, we had a book. Now, there were people in different states pulling stories, and, and everybody had their own process, because it was you um, seeking people with stories, it was Deborah Kohler seeking stories, and it in San Francisco, and then it was me in, in Richmond, Virginia, and um, so uh, I thought that was a great, you know, um, um, group of people to just pull from all areas, so, uh, you know, that was, that was really the, the, the basics. Right, right. Well, and, and while the anthology was being put together, one of our board members was doing some workshops with LGBTQ veterans, uh, encouraging them to write or draw their stories on um, military ACU tops that had been turned inside out. And that was symbolic of the way LGBT uh, service members had lived their lives throughout their careers. Um, so while we were working on the book, we were also working on the shirts and um, doing some workshops as well. I know you were out um, in the field actually talking to service members on, on military installations. And through all of our work getting these projects together, we are the museum and, and, and this project um, got the Albert B. Corey Prize, which is from the American Association for State and Local History. Um, we were picked out of hundreds and hundreds of well-established historic societies and museums and received the top prize for, um, I think it was 
2018. And I wanted to thank you <laughs> um, for helping us get that award. That was an amazing uh, accomplishment. Well, thank you as well. Um, so for two years, so, so, so the, the anthology then spawned a, a play. So for the past two years, you've been painstakingly working on developing a play um, also called Shout. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about that project? Yeah, um, I think I think it was 2017 was the anthology, correct? And then 2018 and 19, I believe, were the um, that was the time period that we moved it into um, uh, a different medium, basically. Right, right. And we realized after the the book was produced that. Um, uh, one story in particular really stood out, and many people agreed that that story would make a wonderful play. Mm. Now, all the people talking about it were not playwrights, but they agreed. They could see, you know, that story and perhaps many others on stage. And so we decided to flesh out that project, and I went and spoke to... Um, you know, many theater people. And when it came down to it, we uh, we spoke to Theater Lab and DJ Gray, who is the director of that um, nonprofit, 501c3, and also um, Melissa Rayford, who works for Theater Lab um, frequently and is a playwright. And they were the two people that, along with me, thought, okay, yes. This actually could be a concrete thing. We have the time, we have the know-how, we have the people that are willing to jump on this right now. And um, we each, you know, knew our roles and were willing to take on those positions. And so from that point on, um, Melissa, with uh, my guidance as well as um, many others from the community, started Using the book as well as her knowledge of the of the LGBTQ plus community mm -hmm. in writing the play, um, and uh, she she so she she produced it in the matter of gosh I can't can you remember now I it was less than a year that she yeah, wrote that it was about and then, included yeah. included. Um, Definitely the main story that we originally thought would be great, but also uh, a sort of conglomeration. She melded many stories together into separate characters, and um, so the, the stories were even stronger. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and you know, within within a year, we were able to have um, some some sort of trial plays. Mm -hmm. um, with, uh, like, the first trial play, I call it a trial play, um, we had just members that we had invited from the LGBTQ military community. Um, so this is, you know, service members, retired, all different um, years of serving, um, um, military, LGBTQ military brats, mm -hmm. LGBTQ military spouses, you know, all of the above. And uh, people working within the community in different organizations as well, because mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure that the rhetoric was definitely true, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. based in history, and um, so they came and watched the play, uh, the working play, and made comments afterwards, you know, we taped everything, and then uh, made changes, and then allowed the public to come to the performance with the changes, uh, it was still considered a working play at that time, we filmed it, and um, knew that at that point, from the reception of the audience, which was, you know, um, both the, the, just the general community plus mm -hmm. people, you know, in the military, um, that we had something that people would be interested in, you know, mm -hmm. in, in other areas. And it, we knew that it would be incredibly um, um, educational. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, that's you know that's kind of where we are. I mean, it's gone further since then. Yeah. Um, makes you like to <laughs> illuminate. <laughs> we'll talk about that where, in where a we second. Are in the yeah. 
Yeah, you know, and, and, and while you were doing the creative work over there in Richmond, um, I was not involved because I was here in New Mexico, but I was behind the scenes um, writing grants to fund it. And so Arcus, which is a huge um, organization gave us an incredibly generous grant in order to bring this to fruition, um, which paid for all the expenses and uh, for for the to to bring the book, which was um, then made into the play. And so we have to thank Arcus, um, the foundation, for uh, that initial grant. And so that's very cool. Um, so, you know, as our artist in residence, I always found it funny as an artist in residence, you're doing a book. Um, so, so, cause we had a writer in residence, but why did you personally want to do these projects with the museum out of all the projects that you could have, you know, come up with, um, what interested it, what interested you most in investing almost three years of your life to shout? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, well, uh, I think of myself as a visual artist. Mm -hmm. I'm also a teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm also a curator. And mm -hmm. it sounds like a lot, but it actually all overlaps. So mm -hmm. it's very easy, you know, for me to do all of those things. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, mainly when I'm in the studio doing my art, I'm, I'm uh, using, like, mixed media and I'm drawing. And, but I always like to try new things. Mm -hmm. And it keeps me on my toes. It keeps mm -hmm. me thinking. Um, it just, you know, in a sense, is mind expanding. Because when you do the same thing over and over again, you can easily get burnt out. And so when you're doing something new, it just keeps me going and researching and wondering and exploring. And, and I get really excited by that. So I think, you know, from a beginning of my artistic career, I've always wanted to accomplish a few things. I've always wanted to show in a major museum. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to uh, produce books. And I've always wanted to work on some sort of theater production. Mm -hmm. um, the first one, getting into a museum, happened fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the other two took a really, really long time. I, I've actually been working towards some kind of book, honestly, since uh, I was in college the first time in the 80s. Um, <laughs> but every idea I came up with, I knew was not strong enough. I would work a few months on something and think, this isn't strong enough. And I would just push it to the side. And mm -hmm. I never forced anything. Mm -hmm. um, but when this came about, I knew. I knew the timing was right. I knew that I could get enough information to fill a book, and the team of people were right. Mm -hmm. So it just all fell into line, and I had to. I had to go for it. Mm -hmm. Well, and it has been um, received well. The book has been received well. As a matter of fact, the book was kind of funny. So I'm sitting here in New Mexico, and I had a friend stop by the museum and another with, with and brought somebody with with him, and she was a film producer, and she had been given a copy of Shout, and she said, you know, I'd like to produce Shout. And, 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 and this one particular story, the one that we made into a play ultimately. And I was intrigued, but I was trying to figure this out. How would this work? And so when we consulted with, you know, each other, you know, you said, well, you know, I think it would be better as a play. And, and, and so, you know, things just kind of fell into, and then another board member found the Arcus grant and then another board member did, you know, X, Y, and Z. And so, you know, it, it, this, you are right. The aligning of the sun, moon, stars, planets, and comets all lined up to make this happen. Um, so since, um, Shout has now been out in Richmond, um, we're we're moving on to do you know um we're we're trying to do more with this play and get it so that it's a national um process and we have since been given a grant by Gr griffin hart foundation to create curriculum so talk about a little bit about what is the next step for shout what are we doing next well in terms of working um taking that that griffin hart 
um, grant, mm -hmm. and we have allocated it towards the educational component mm -hmm. of the play. Uh -huh. And so what will happen is um, when, when um, the two people that are, that are working on this educational component mm -hmm. finish this, um, we will then have a full package to lease to people. Mm -hmm. And from the beginning, we had hoped that this, well, we had worked towards, not more than hoped, we worked towards this being accessible to all. Mm -hmm. um, meaning, um, you know, uh, what is it, universities, um, bigger stage companies, say, like off-Broadway, to the... Um, community theaters, uh, even. Call it? Community houses, yes, yeah, community yeah. centers, uh -huh. um, high school. Across the board. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what what would happen is, uh, you know, I would um, manage. Well, you and I both really mm -hmm. um, would manage the package. And if someone was interested, they could call or write us and say, "Hey, you know, could we see a portion of your play to see if it's something that we're interested in?" We send them a portion, and they read it. Mm -hmm. And once that they get, have interest, mm -hmm. then um, we start working on a contract. Uh, mm -hmm. with a lease mm -hmm. and then send them the full script and you know mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it goes it goes from there so I will uh, be managing um, the leasing probably for the next five to seven years mm -hmm. um, I would imagine mm -hmm. and that's part of what I do mm -hmm. um, I've done that before with long-term projects mm -hmm. um, to different museums um, this one however is much more accessible well, and we want to make this very reasonably priced so that small theaters and you know can can uh, benefit by it. And I'd like to point out at this point, the curriculum development is 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 happening um, through San Francisco State University. Um, women and gender studies um, department um, and and we're developing the curriculum to facilitate conversations um, directors have the option to to use our curriculum guide or not but it will be part of the package um, giving some context to history lgbtq history uh military history terminology because some of the communities may not know the each other's communities like we're we've we're um putting in a lot of information about brats and military spouses um so we're we're excited um so are there any places right now that are looking at shout yes um right now we have uh two places that have a keen interest um Let's see, uh, uh, Provincetown in 2021 um, is, is there looking at the contract, and mm -hmm. it most likely will happen then and there. And then also, um, uh, there are some people in L.A. that are looking to produce it. So, um, and that's even before we've gotten the package completed. So mm -hmm. I'm really hopeful with this. Mm -hmm. We haven't even started marketing yet. So once we start marketing, I have really high hopes for this. Well, I do too. Um, so I know that you started a, a Facebook page for Shout, or it's a Facebook group. Um, where can people find out more about the play or contact for um, you know, getting the script or, 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 or things like that? We so tell us about the Facebook um, page. What, what yeah, they so there, yeah, yeah. What, so there are quite a few places you could get a hold of um, of us. Uh, one is um, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can look up Shout the Play and go on there and message me directly, Laura Belden. Um, I also have a military kid art project page. You can message me there. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you at the um, Military Family Museum, mm -hmm. Cersei Wozner, anyone can reach you. Right. Um, because you and I are the ones managing mm -hmm. uh, this for the long term. So um, those are probably the best ways. 
Right. Um, I, and, and I wanted to point out that any proceeds that we get for the play, um, the rights, the package, are going equally being distributed between the museum and Military Kid Art Project. Um, neither Laura nor Circe are getting money for this play, but the organizations, our, our nonprofits, are going to be the beneficiaries for um, you know, any proceeds going to the play. Um, so, so good. And, and, and so I can be reached at, uh, military family museum at comcast.net. Um, but I would think that the Facebook, uh, page is the best place to get the most current updates on the process and the progress of the play. And so, um, we will be actually putting the links at the bottom of this podcast and we will be sharing this in our social media as we go along. Um, anything else you want to say, Laura, while we, before we wrap it up? Um, it is a... I would say if you wanted to uh, get the anthology with all of the stories in it, mm -hmm. um, I believe you can still go to uh, Lulu. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, how much is it selling for, Cersei? I, I, um, I'm thinking it's around $15. So um, lulu.com, and if you search Shout... Um, and, and then look for Laura Belden, uh, B-E-L-D-O-N, as the author, and Circe Wessner, W-O-E-S-S-N-E-R. You should be able to pull it up. Um, it's, it's for sale there um, exclusively, as far as I, I know. Yes, locally in Richmond, let's see. Um, it's for sale at um, Chop Suey Books. Okay. Well, very good. And they can, you can always email us. I'll put the link to the, to the, the Lulu site um, on the bottom of the podcast. So I just wanted to um, say thanks a lot, Laura, for joining us. It, it, it is um, June. It's Pride Month. It's um, summer. We are in a pandemic, so I think things are a little bit muted. But I, I definitely wanted to, um, you know, show our pride. Um, both as an organization and in, in this wonderful play that, you know, has come to fruition through so many people's efforts. And so um, I hope people will check us out. So I wanted to thank you for being with us. Um, and thanks for taking some time today. Yeah, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it.